a bit uh, from my own day session. Um, I want to take a panel which is on the same very topic. Then during the question and answers of the panel, you can please direct your questions to me if that works. Is that better so that we can save time? Uh, it's my pleasure to invite Engineer Sunisiero, who is heavily represented by Mr. Peter, to join the panel. Please. It's also my pleasure to invite Dr. Yusuf Sali, uh, who is Permanent Secretary for Ministry of Education, heavily represented by the director. Sir, can you please join us on the panel? And also I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Bashir Mohammed, who is uh, from Ministry of Health, please join us. I would also like to invite you, sir, from the Ministry of Local Government, to please join us on the panel. And um, so I'd also like to invite Mohammed Sankas to join the panel. And the panel will be moderated by Mr. Leslie. I also want to invite the representative for Corin as the regulators of the very engineering profession. Please help us join the panel. And um, let's have a ride. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Kassim. Thank you, everyone, for taking out the time you know, to be part of this session, beginning from yesterday. Um, um, up to this time. We actually would agree that from our discussions yesterday we have made some progress. And what we want to try to do today and at this point is try to see how we can together take this course forward. Already a uh, representative from the Ministry of Education was ahead of us when he asked that question you know, during the last presentation that um, we shouldn't leave all the work to Mr. Peter. And of course, that is what we are trying to do with this session. And that's why we have brought on board all of us to let us know that we are not trying to give Mr. Peter all the work. We don't want to overburden Mr. Peter. And you will now try to hear from the various MDAs represented here how we also have, or what roles we, they also play and how they can play those roles better. You'll agree with me that public procurement data disclosure is key to our objective one, which is effectiveness, transparency, accountability of public procurement system in Kaduna State. Mr. Peter had taken us through the kind of data that is available pre-award and post-award. And you know, we'll be hearing more of that. Um, let me just do some quick statistics before we you know, have our panelists talk. On the OCDS portal, if I'm correct, we have a total of 959 projects that have been published, 959. And Kasim was able to show um, showed us that you know, before launch. Um, on our cardppaocds.azure website.net, which is the portal where we have the 959, Averagely, with a 4G network, it takes about 6.3 seconds to fully load. 6.3 seconds to fully load, and I'll tell you why I'm quoting all of this. On the cardppa.eprocurement.ng portal, the last we checked, it took about 57.1 seconds, and I haven't tried it while I was here. The network here is quite bad, but that's a long time, almost one minute for the website to come up. Then um, there's the eprocurement.kdsg.gov.ng that takes about 6.6 .6 seconds to actually come off. Then there's the cardppa.kdsg.gov.ng, which is like your sub domain under the kdsg.gov.ng, which we didn't quite test, but we know that you know it has the, um, the, there's there's need for a lot of SEO, search engine optimization work on that portal. You know why? If you Google CAD PPA, that's the first portal that you should see. Now, why am I you know, trying to get all these speed tests? An average internet user, a Gen Z person, a 21st century person, and you would help us, sir. you who are the researchers, the users of the data, 
averagely, if a website takes, you might not know, but subconsciously, if a website takes more than three seconds to fully load, it discourages you. It increases the bounce rate on those portals. So again, we need to start from those basics. You are telling me to go to this portal is like a user-friendly portal where I can get, you know, it's like a, like you quote on one of your um, portals. Say it's a one-stop shop to get data. But if I go there and it's taking me almost one minute, and that's for the CATPPA.epokemon.ng, almost one minute. I still tried it here. I of um, officers who carry out any functions on that platform. Now, for the upload of information, it depends on who is uploading and what information that they are uploading. For the ministries, departments, and agencies, that is where they create their advertisements, that is where they load up their procurement plans. So, for them, on either kppa.eprocurement.ng or eprocurement.kdsg.gov.ng, any of the procurement portals, the responsibility for uploading information comes from the MDs. That is why we train them on how they go about uploading the information on the e-procurement portals. On the OCDS portal, the responsibility for uploading information on that portal is actually for the MDs. As well. It's actually for the MDs as well. But because we have had gaps, especially in training, and even in the development and the bits of information that is required, we have decided that it should be automated. And you remember that during my conversation yesterday, I stated that um, some levels of integration are taking place, but then we were looking that by the end of um, first quarter 2022, we should have full integration so that they don't have to upload anything and then it just goes, it gets done manually. On the other hand, because of these challenges of uploading those bits of information and gap in skill, um, what we have done uh, thus far, we used to use bulk upload system because the system allows for two methods of upload. Either you're uploading them as the projects are taking place, or you're uploading them as bulk uploads. And bulk uploads is usually in retrospect. So those bulk uploads are usually done with um, some of our consultants who have also helped to develop some of those portals. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned something um, about the challenges that gaps in capacity and training. Maybe I'll ask Mr. Carson, you know, who is, you know, the co-chair for OCDS and Open Contracting and also doubles as um, one of the leads in trans transparent, transparency IT or something. So you will help us, please, with um, the levels of training because I know that your organization and leads have organized several trainings for civil servants and CSO. So how much trainings have you done so far and to what level? Because Mr. Peter had mentioned that there are gaps in terms of training. So maybe you should help us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are to training since 2019. Yeah. That was when, uh, after, when the OCS came through. I think in 2019, sometime in November, we did a training where we brought both CS and government officials. Like I remember to criticize uh, health MDs and education MDs. We covered them, them with public works. CADRA, all of CAD Pharma, uh, primary healthcare, we brought them all together. We took them through how to use the portal to upload their own very data. Then 2020, so uh, 2020 January, we had a high level stakeholders engagement where we also further understood the gap. And one of the gaps that the government kept saying was around capacity building. So we took it among ourselves to also train 17 more procurement officers. But now, from all one one person from the procurement officers, because one of the things they said then was, yes, we trained someone from education, but they are, he has been transferred to another MD. So there was there was a little of a gap in some MDs. So right now we train some team, taking care of all the service delivery MDs, even with CASU. So we, we took, we, we were very deliberate on taking the key institutions. We were deliberate on taking the more uh, high spenders. Yeah. We took the, the, the MDs that usually provide services that go direct to the grassroots. We took them, also trained them, 
as uh, the second time. We also for that engage them and work uh, one on one to handhold them on how to use those very platforms. So outside those very trainings, which they understood the gaps were in the training, which CS promised they were going to do the training, which we did. Then, then after that, when when they went, we we're expecting more of the proactiveness to continue. Now that they, they say trends, they have been trained. Then they, they change the narrative now to issues around computer, issues around uh, data, issues around resources, which, which, which sincerely I believe does not what CS can do. Yeah. That's what the government can do. This is more of a commitment thing. So we've made a commitment, this is what we can do. And even we have to provide the computer. Mm -hmm. But we can't provide the computers. And it was a high level engagement where they say, okay, we are going to do this and we are going to do this. So it's over a year which we have fulfilled our own very own commitment. Still up to now we are handholding, we do call, okay, when well, well, would you do this, when would you do that? Still that putting the whole of the the whole of the work to happen. Which is also which is as uh, Ms. Peter said, it's also a huge work. But when we just believe that when they do that from their very various MDAs, it's more sustainable, you tend to achieve more quality for data. And it's even easier. It's easier, it's not just lot. Every MDA has the dashboard. You just upload these documents and you show it. So we've done what we are, what we can do and we're still open for most of those trainings if they feel there's still gap uh, the uh, opening capacity which we can do. We are also better trained, we are willing to also deliver on those very trainings. But one of the things is we want to see them match up that very, that very commitment. After two trainings, what have happened? Even if it's just one procurement that does data and leave, okay, okay, then the scale. That's it. So we've done the little trainings we can do, we've done, and we're also open for more trainings. We're also open for more trainings if they need. Okay, thank you. We'll actually come, come back to you because we know that this year you have also trained. You trained people this year, sometime in June or July. Okay, so I think that it's, it's important that we put some of these things in perspective. And Sani, I, I, I think you would also appreciate this. Because in, I remember that the training that took place, especially the one in Zaire, was in 2019. Right? 2019. Because, and why I'm saying it could have only taken place in 2019 was because a large part of 2020 was on lockdown. Oh, except if I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming. So it would never naturally have taken place in 2019. Subsequently, in 2020, there was the whole pandemic. I remember I, I, I complained a bit because I, had, I was one of those people who had to go to work constantly every day even during uh, the pandemic. So yes, 2020 is out of it. And then 2021 is where we're now... Um, uh, 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 I, I, I don't know, have we had another training in 2021 on that? Okay. Yeah, so I know that in 2019, yes. 2019. We've also done in 2021. In 2021. I'm trying to check the Okay, okay, okay. Uh, just you understand. So that we put it in context. The reason why I'm saying this is this. You know, it's it's if we if we leave it at the stage where we just say, okay, we train people and a couple of times and they are not doing anything. Because in all honesty, I've engaged, I'm one of those people who has had to deal with um, a lot of things around the procurement and some of the MDs. And I've engaged a lot of procurement officers. Sometimes I've had to call or send mails or request that procurement officers deal with some form of work at very odd hours on multiple occasions. Not once, not twice, not in terms of maybe one off times or this thing. Multiple occasions I've had to call procurement officers at 1 to a.m. Because right now, as, as far as we are now making things electronic, the, the work must just get done. So I'm, 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 I'm cautious about us saying, okay, probably procurement officers are not taking the initiative or stepping up. I would rather that, okay, yes, there, might, there, there should be more commitment. There might need to be more drive, more push and all of that. But I think that with the bits of information, and especially since we're talking about this, a scenario where you're giving people on the job training, is as the thing, the situation is unfolding, that you're, you're expecting, you're, you're giving some sort of training and expecting them to do the work. That is why I just wanted to get that clarity, so that it's not as if, you know, there's a, a training that's taking place, people are not taking advantage of it, or not using it, and then just keep making excuses. That I want to... Okay, so before I get back to Mike, I'm just 
help us answer that question. How yes. many trainings have you done from your own end? Okay, for for uh, 2021, three of them, okay. three trainings okay. uh, for 2021. Uh, two of them, one, uh, one for five, because what we did was, the first one was for five uh, procurement officers across 50 MDs. The second one was uh, for, okay, now the second one was actually more of in our offices. And then what we did was we had, um, I think, about seven procurement officers per each MD, and then defined roles for them that they were supposed to carry out and train them based on the specific rules that they expected to carry out. And then the third one was on the 5th of October. Um, it was also a sensitization and a business meeting for both vendors, civil society groups, um, 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 uh, professional bodies, NIQS, um, NSE, uh, NIA, um, Chartered Institute of Purchase and Supply, as well as a couple of other organizations. All right, thank you. So in all honesty, I think um, so far we've had like about six trainings. So to be fair, I think with one in 2019, one in 2020, one in 2021, you didn't even tell us your own of for 2020 and 2019. The three you spoke of was, on, uh, was for 2021. In all honesty, I think that's enough information that should, you know, you know spur some action. But before we actually come to you again, um, Ministry of Education, sir, on the OCDS portal, between 2016 and 2021, and when we showed it here the last time, one of your colleagues who was here wasn't happy with the fact that we were, we were, we were trying to say that you were not working on No, we were just trying to show the obvious. And like, you know, we are saying, even those websites that I quoted with those load times at the start of the talk, you can test them yourself. That's the essence, you know, so that you don't think that, you know, I made them up or something. So you can go to those portals, even as you are seated here, and test the load second. But again, we showed that between 2016 and 2021, out of the 959 projects that have been uploaded on the OCDS portal, only 73 projects are from the Ministry of Education. There are some of your MDAs that are there, like the library for years from the ministry. We have 73 projects, totaling about some 20 billion naira, with the highest award being 1.8 billion and the lowest award being 7 million. The most recent uploaded project is the one we saw earlier on the provision of school uniforms for students across the state using MSMEs, which was, I think it was um, uploaded in September 2021. But again, like he observed, with a lot of, you know, fields missing, no uh, date of award, no name of the, the contractor, the details, and all, and all of that. So would that be any challenge, sir? Would you want to maybe let us understand what challenges uh, limiting you from publishing, you know, as much project because I don't want to believe that we have only 73 projects so far that should be on that portal. Maybe there should be more or something between 2016 and 2021. So just help us out. 2016. Okay. You see, uh, it's like uh, we are missing the point altogether. Okay. As. Uh, what I would have said that don't direct that question to Peter at all. It's not what he's saying, Peter. Saying civil servant. I think when he said he has engaged, he said he engaged the top manager. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask the top manager he was talking about. You know, I know most of the senior management civil service directors, other senior colleagues around this directorship. If you talk of the top management, that means it's like the executives. Yeah. And a civil servant, to my understanding, is just like a machine. We want him to work 180 kilometers per hour he move, provided the foil, the servicing is there to move. If you want him to work 40 kilometers per hour to move. So why I'm saying you are, you are missing the point, sometimes now, let, let me go back to that question when you said from 2016, mm -hmm. a lot of contracts, even education was declared as an emergency. Mm -hmm. 
But I know when we started giving that, that out, there was no this e procurement issue. But I know you expect us to upload this on the platform. There are a lot of irregularities concerned, and sorry to say that. So now, if the top management, to me, top management is the executives. If they are the one moving this process, maybe to say they are the ones sitting down here, that would, we, would have, we would have better results. Why I'm saying this is, when you say we, 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 we are going to do bidding, we are going to do this, we have a tantrum, we have our budget, we require our procurement plan. But as we are saying we are applying, is the chief executive that said, okay, do this. On most occasions, these processes are tempered by the chief executives. So that is why you find that if I'm going to upload this, you may not have all the detailed information at one particular time. So I think these are something that maybe cannot be fully discussed here. But to me, you may have more results that can be corrected if it is the top management that is sitting down. Most of these issues, I cannot take a decision. I cannot take a decision. We might have a lot of hesitation because we want to follow the, the right uh, rules governing what we do. Because everyone, <laughs> as a civil servant, everyone wants to follow as the rules. Yes. But is it possible? So these are some of the things that hinder us putting the right thing at the right time. Yeah, this is the key take yes. takeaway for us. So is this where is, is this where we are missing the point? This not, what I'm saying. not engaging top to me top management. Management. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, yes, please. We will come back to you. So the same thing we want to hear from um, health. Ministry of Health between so you are not reading your scenes here or because I have all your data here. Ministry of Health, between 2016 and 2021, all that we have is 46 projects published on that portal. Total contracts, tot totaling 2 billion from 2016 to date, highest um, award of 356 million, Lowest award being seventy-eight thousand, and I know the Ministry of Health is up to date when it comes to you know some of these data integration and the use of you know um, what you call the open data with the helper and the likes. So why are you lacking in this area? Is there any reason? Do you know you know in your own capacity? Because we've just gotten the feedback from the Ministry of Education, but in your cap in your capacity, can you maybe just give us? Reasons why you think this is happening. I, I first of all will say um, I, as Minister of Health, I totally agree with what um, the education just said. Also, and um, you know, when it comes to data itself, it's there are a lot of uh, processes before a data you know, gets uploaded, and um, you know, the bureaucracy between the person who captures, persons who record, persons who collects, persons who analyze, and persons who upload, and so on and so forth. Those very processes could also be hindrance to, you know, some of this data not being available. And um, an officer who collects cannot automatically go and upload. He has to go through you know, the, the, the top exec executives, which um, he mentioned could could stand as uh, an, an, a barrier or so. And other issues could also, could also be uh, in terms of capacity. Capacity now in, in, in its different levels, it could be that, you know, the tools or the design for, for those very uh, uh, capacity uh, stuff may not be, may, may not be really um, understood by that very uh, entity. And then, also, aside uh, those very tools, also maybe the structures around 
checking quality, like doing quality checks also, could also stand also as barriers to you know some of these issues in general. So I can only make like a very you know description of the issues, not not directly, uh, you know, because they are so so numerous. So thank you. Okay, thank you. But you've actually touched on them some. You mentioned capacity. You mentioned you know there might be lack of uh, tools. You mentioned the processes. So again, you know what we should be asking ourselves should be is um, were all these things not fact factor before setting up this? Because we expect that by the time these portals are set set up, whatever it takes to make them work should have been you know processed, should have been looked at, you know, before we now commit ourselves to saying, okay, we want to follow global best practice and all of that. We should have factored all these challenges before doing that. Again, Ministry of Local Government, sir, we want to commend you. Why? Five local governments, if I'm not mistaken, out of the 23, have their, some of their projects um, uploaded on that portal. And you know, Mr. Peter was quick to say yesterday that whatever the guideline and the law co covers is both for local government and for this, I know, for the cent central state. I think we have um, Kudan, Nere, Sabongeli, about five of them, Zaria, whose projects are uploaded on the portal. But we are, we're a bit take, we're taking you know aback a bit when we check and we saw that their father, the parent minist ministry, the Ministry of Local Government Affairs, has only four of its projects uploaded on the portal between 2016 and 2021. Because we expect that you know you should be the watchdog and try to put them in order. But you have only four of your projects uploaded between 2016 and 2021. The total of all that is 740 million. Highest amount being 255 million, lowest award being 69 million. Most recent uploaded projects is the supply of literacy and numeracy primary school teaching aid, which was published on 24th of August 2020, last year, and it was for the budget year of 2019. Would your challenges be similar to your colleagues, or do you think you know there are some specific challenges to your own local government? Thank you. To your own ministry, sorry. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on the panel. And secondly, what I want to inform you is that the ministry is a coordinating ministry. It coordinates the activities of the 23 local government. I don't know there are some departments that are under it, like the mass literacy and the rural infrastructure development. And these are uh, agent, I mean, this department were incorporated later, later in the district. And most of the projects that the infrastructure does mostly were projects that have to meet uh, boreholes and uh, feeder roads. And uh, recently, the issue of borehole was moved to Wasa, and then the infrastructure, the uh, of, and some of the this thing was moved to Minnesota uh, Fox. So that may amount to the low uploads you might uh, have noticed on the uh, dashboard. Uh, I wouldn't know uh, actually because I don't really have the data. But what I know is that uh, mostly the local governments have been encouraged to really upload their projects and uh, they have been encouraged to really linked up with the whole process of uh, e procurement, uh, transparency, and accountability. And to that extent, uh, so many reforms around that areas were uh, really institutionalized, like the issue of uh, local government account, transparency and accountability mechanism, and so on and so forth. So, so far, in as much as we are really being held back by the bureaucracy, as uh, my colleagues have said, but we are also really trying to push forward to see that these reforms are really institutionalized and are really working, more especially at the local government level. All right, thank you very much. So I think um, we'll just you know, get your um, closing thoughts and we'll try to wrap up. So I'll start with you, sir. Karen, you've had the challenges, you've had some of the setbacks and the issues. 
but we know that data is critical to our development. Like Goje said, there is a survey that shows that 70 or 75 percent of the corruption in any government happens at procurement level. I think he was recently reaffirmed in another study that I saw. With all these lapses that we have, how do you think we can better improve on the quality and the timeliness? So recently I did a research this year on the e-procurement system in Kaduna. Um, anonymous, yes, not mentioning any names, but you know, I had even some government officials admit that the data on the portals are not seen, that the government scored 100, even from some of the government officials. So how do you think we can work to make you know, our data, the data that we, I need that data. If you give me you know, half of what we are ask, asking for, it make my life easy. Tracking is, is, is easier, monitoring is easier. So how do you think we can work on the quality of the data? Thank you very much, moderator. Uh, good, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, specifically, Corey will come in when it comes to quality. Quality of uh, the project. Of the projects. Now, you need data. Yes, to cover it all. So, first of all, I would like to shed more light on the position of Corey to the public and even other civil societies. Because what I came to understand is that uh, there is a difference in the level of understanding of what calling, what is the purpose of calling, what are the mandates of calling. Uh, calling, it is a federal government body which is vested with the responsibility under uh, the decree 55 of 1970 amended uh, amended 27 uh, as decree uh, 27 decree amended 1992 now the indigenous registration article e11 of 2004 and 2018 as amended establishes scoring as a statutory body of the federal government empowered to regulate the practice of engineering in all its aspects and ramifications in nigeria with regard to three basic mandates. Number one, ensure and enforce the registration of all engineering personnel and consulting construction firms. Carry out accreditation of engineering programs in our institutions of life. Carry out engineering regulation and monitoring, which right was ERM. Therefore, current under this mandate, situated all its offices in the whole 36 states, including Abuja, with the Federation, that has to look, oversee, regulate all federal government contracts, state government contracts, and local government contracts. Korean has a body which is constituted of professionals that goes to these ERM functions. And thank God with the recent development with the current registrar, they develop two basic strategies. In the institution of planning, we introduce what we call OBE, Operational Based Education. We went to the universities, we started the universities, we put them through how they can be able to teach their students, they come out, they can be able to impact into the society. We put down the models for them, I will take, we pick um, three, three <coughs> representatives from each institution, and it is currently going on all over the six geopolitical zones. Yes, what we did, the strategy was to pick a university in all the zones and invited the nearby catchment area universities so that we can participate in such programs. After this university program, we are going to the polytechnics, monotechnics, down to the colleges of education. Have you been working with That's where I'm coming. That's where I'm coming. So, under the area, that's
that was the accreditation that's for under the area there is what we call state technical committees so Corey is now putting down what I'm saying is constituting STCs. This STCs in every state constitute all these bodies. Number one, the executive governor of that state, his representative is included, Ministry of Works, Ministry for Local Government, Kasuka, uh, the military, the prostatus, that's the, we have, we have uh, civil defense, we have um, the other one is uh, immigration services and the police. So these STC committees are meant to work in that particular state, in the areas of procurement. Because what we believe is that, as I spoke earlier yesterday, 80 to 85 percent of government revenue is spent on procurement. And majority of the work done is engineering, either manufacturing, uh, other manufacturing, construction, vendoring, and you know, all other things. So in terms of quality, yes. I'm now soliciting the CAD PPA yes. to now look onto these opportunities yes. of current so that it can involve current in its draft of this particular bigger program. Thank you very much. So I, I believe CAD PPA has actually taken that. Now, as we take our closing thoughts, we'll just, you know, ask a general question and we'll give each speaker one, one minute to please give us their closing thoughts on how to improve. We have heard where the gaps are. We have heard where the challenges are. We have heard where the issues are. Now, we want you to advise, what next steps do you think we also, as civil society, can do or take to make this process easier? Of course, like Carson said, civil society can't buy pieces or data for civil servants to do some of this work. But you know where it pinches you, you know, more, and you can tell us where you think we can come in a civil society, and what you think you can also go back and do. We heard yesterday, Mr. Peter confidently was calling our attention to the fact that the last time we came, this is very small, where it was projected on the screen the last time we were here, how that the level or the number of projects on the OCDS portal is on a decline from when it launched till date. Not just a decline, a very deep nose diving decline. But he assured us that work is ongoing, it's getting better, and we hope to see something before the end of the year. So please, your closing thoughts on how we can move forward. Beginning from Mr. Peter, and we'll end at Mr. Carson. Thank you. Um, I must be honest, I have quite a bit to say. Because it's, um, it, it can be um, painful for the lack of a better word to put in a bit of effort and work and to see it either disregarded or misunderstood. But then I think um, in terms of some of the issues that have been raised, you will find out that a lot of them border on things that settle on infrastructure. And when I'm talking about infrastructure, I'm talking about infrastructure that helps us able to carry out the activities that um, we have. I know that the state government has already, already has plans on the way and has already started equipping all of its civil service with um, computers and internet access in the various offices. That is already being taken care of. I also know that the state government has also approved um, the uh, the domestication of a procurement cadre, which will allow that procurement officers can properly be trained, their capacities can be built, and then they are deployed to the various ministries, departments, and agencies and to be able to, as procurement officers, a procurement cadre would mean whether he's an engineer, 
a lawyer or whatever, as long as he has taken or undertaken the conversion course, he's now in procurement officer, strictly at that. I also know that um, across multiple of the MDs that we have, and uh, I can speak for some such as health, education, um, there, you know they used to have uh, what we call um, project departments, but those departments are no longer there because the core mandate of those departments, of those ministries are supposed to be focusing on either <coughs> education or health. And so the government in its wisdom has decided that a lot of their projects, now when it comes to either their um, construction projects, are taking and domiciled in specific ministries. It's the same thing why you will find out that uh, Ministry of Health doesn't procure um, face masks or, uh, or those equipment and things. Now it is the mandate of the Health Supply Management Agency who procures all of those things so that there is standardization. So you'll find out that there are a lot of these reforms in terms of re-strategizing, reorganizing, and then so that the people within the core ministries themselves can focus on their mandates in terms of either improving education, improving health, and then those things that have to do with either the procurement systems where they are um, largely doing themselves with either building works or something like that, can be within the purview of ministries that have control over those such as public works, housing and urban development, and so on and so forth. So I think for, um, then the last, my last ticket or bit of contribution would be to say that I think um, fora like this is, is brilliant. It's, it's amazing. It's lovely to see how ideas pop up from amongst us, how we ooh and ah as concepts and ideas are being discussed. But it is not just about just gathering here and having these conversations. If you do not document it, all of it is stirring. Government's procedure is what is documented. So please, for me, I think largely I will create the civil society. Never see these things as in their work or our work. But let's see it as a collective thing. And then document and send forward. You might document and then, as long as you have received an acknowledgement copy, it's a basis for a further conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I only want to say that there is the need for that synergy between the MDs. It's very key. Even if it is not Minister of Health that is carrying the activities, mm. but they have the data. Mm. What do we want? Whoever that is going to do the procurement should use their data. And whatever they are doing, there should be that synergy between the MDs. That is key. And I also want to say that uh, the, I just want to emphasize on my first point that the top management mm. are very key to the success of the company. Okay. Um, let me, let me uh, use a scenario. Um, maybe after lunch, I came into the hall with a stain of soup on my shirt. And then I walked in, everybody sees it, and I sit down. And then People talk about it, ah, he's, there's a stain in his shirt, and nobody told me. Then maybe so another person I walked up to me and said, ah, there's a stain in your shirt. And I was like, okay. And I still sat down. Another person said, ah, there's a stain. I still sat down. When most of people, uh, I, multiple people come to tell me that this, I know that it's an issue, mm -hmm. I will react. So I think the MDAs needs regular feedback. We need to always be reminded that there is an issue somewhere because it can be an issue and we ignore it this issue can pass we can we can do without this issue we can you know but when when you have a lot of people giving us feedbacks and it becomes an issue we will definitely respond thank you well uh good afternoon once more uh my take is that uh the state government has really demonstrated uh commitment Towards sure, uh, ensuring that all these processes are being uh, uh, are being transparent and that uh, the government is being held accountable for its deeds. Uh, uh, what I want to encourage is that the civil society should be work on doing asking the right questions, doing their own part, more especially on the area of sensitization of the people and the grassroots. People need to understand all these things 
in a very simple language they can comprehend. Because uh, there is no point in deploying uh, a high-tech platform uh, uh, process, which an ordinary person cannot even understand, interact, and interface with. So there is a need for more sensitization, more education to the populace that the, because it is only when that is done that the people will now start asking the right question, holding government responsible, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, on the part of the ministry for local government, there is uh, this commitment, there is this uh, determination to ensure that uh, all that is being done at the state level is also being replicated at the local government. There, uh, there is this alignment with uh, the because the, the whole system is working towards one goal, that's to make Kaguna uh, greater. Again, not make Kaguna great again, but let's together, let's make Kaguna greater. So I think everybody should play, uh, every part of the society should play its role. The government uh, workers should see themselves as civil servants, as being opportune to be in a particular place at a particular time. And when, the, when their time expires, they will still go back as citizens. The citizens to see the government as uh, uh, doing what, uh, uh, protecting their interests, providing infrastructure for their own well-being and uh, economic improvement. So when there is this uh, synergy, there is uh, this uh, a sort of a good working relationship, not one party uh, looking at the other party, uh, I mean, looking trying to pick fault in the other party, then I think uh, we'll make progress. Thank you. Before you pass the mic, sir, just, you know, to what do you think your ministry can do to help CAD, PPA, and all of us ensure that the remaining, how many, 18 local governments have their projects published on the OCDS? I think, uh, it's really, I wanted to say it. Yes. There should be an advocacy, a serious advocacy on the, uh, the high-level management of the ministry, that's the commissioner. I believe even like uh, last two who were together with the DG KPPA, the engineer at Abuja, I really highlighted all these processes and I there is this kind of commitment. The chairmen are really willing. They are willing to really go along with all these things. So when if these are uh, these things are documented as Mr. Peter said, forwarded to the ministry that these are the only local government that are on board, uh, we write it, draw their attention that this is the other local government should also call on board. So the civil society should pay a, an advocacy visit to the commission, to the to the ministry. The PPA can write to the ministry that so far these are all the local government that are publishing that is on this thing. And the, the remaining local government are expected to come on board. And maybe it, if there is gap on the part of like capacity strengthening and so on, I know that Kappa KPPA has been really interfacing with the local government. They've been engaging on these uh, issues. So if this uh, advocacy, writing letters to the ministry is done, I believe the other local government will be on board as well. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, I want to again stress that we're grateful to the domestic government. We're not saying you guys have done nothing. We're just saying as, as Kaduna, as Ganu Madam, we must cause up in the fight before we celebrate. That's a benchmark for everybody. That's a benchmark. That's the benchmark, yes. That's what is called the primary school teachers week. So we must call some of the before. <laughs> yes, to be applied across board. So we are very grateful for the commitment shown so far. I also want to beg that the ministry start seeing us as partners. We have nothing to gain when we share. We have nothing to gain. And by the way, this was a co-created commitment. The ministry government felt, yes, we will do this portal. So whatever it's worth doing must be done well. We understand you guys have, uh, the government is facing its own very challenges. We also understand we are also facing our own various challenges. So it's the best thing is for a platform as we've been doing and we're going to continue doing it. What CS will continue to do on this very OCDS is we'll continue talking objectively. I'm glad we're thinking all what we've been doing is about data. We're not talking off it, we're saying this is it. We'll continue talking objectively. We'll continue providing the needed support that we believe we can, especially around capacity building, especially around testing the quality of the data that has been uploaded. 
What we pray and expect from you is to be more friendly to us. Please reply to our leaders. We have had leaders with you for over, for over three years. If you have a file, please follow this file and start, and start replying to those leaders. Have you got letters like, like Martin? Yes, I also have letters, letters with them. So please just start replying to them. Even if it's not from 2015, you can take 2018 upward. Uh, it's fine. We'll forgive you. <laughs> we'll forgive two years, so we'll start from 2019. So please reply to those letters. See us as friends. I'm sure the relationship we've, we've had so far is more of mutual. We are not, we are not, we are not, we are not being antagonistic. But please be more friendly to us and open up your process. There are some things, there are some problems that if you have, if you don't communicate to us, there's no way that we'll know you are facing a problem. And that's why our expectations will be more higher, and higher, and higher. Communication is a two-way thing. One-way communication is transmission. Please let's communicate in a two-way angle. We're always here to support you, what we can. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. How many of you would agree that this panel is deserves to have a course? Like a very big round of applause. Thank you. I think we are done. I would like us to take a picture. I'm happy to be part of this panel. And I want to publish it on my yes. So, please, what I wanted Kaduna State to understand is that it is losing a lot from current participation in the regulation of construction industry in Kaduna State. Because the government is pumping the money into current body so that it can regulate these practices. And even the, the private sector, even the people at the receiving end, a lot of things are going on which are not checkmated. And if government, the United States government will really look onto the impact of Corey, it will definitely bring Corey into your operations. Like I talk of the STC committees, I talk of the OBU program. Even the civil society, now in Kaduna State for over 10 years, no any civil society ever comes to Corey office to ask of what is the function of Corey and what Corey has been doing. Anything that you have in terms of the low level participation of engineering practice. That is the man that's doing your tires by the roadside. Corin has something to do about it. So you can see a lot of things. You don't need to call somebody that is a quack to do your car that is five million, six million naira. That is concrete. You don't have to call somebody that's not an engineer. It's just wearing a helmet. Architects, but say builders will come as engineers, supervise your buildings, and at the end of the day you have a problem. So please, can PPA, I want you to involve current certification and licensing for securing uh, procurement in the subsequent years from the government. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before they snap the picture, one thumbs up. Yes. Thank you very much.